This is the weekly business news in English on TV3. I am Nugzarov Khadza. Good morning. Frank Walter Steinmeier, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany, paid an official visit to Georgia. In our country, the top German diplomat's visit was assessed as an expression of solidarity and political support for Georgia. The topics of Mr. Steinmeier's talks at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Georgia and his negotiations with the Georgian president and the premier of Georgia covered the recent developments at the, and took place on the occupied territories. Further intensification of Georgian-German bilateral relations and revision of legal aspects of the agreement concluded between the two countries. At the meeting, they also discussed the issues of organizing the working groups for preparing the celebration of German-Georgian year. At the meeting with Premier Irakli Garibashvili, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany voiced the initiative to convene a Georgian-German business forum. He said that the forum would strengthen the contacts between the businesses of the two countries and attract additional investments. Once again, Mr. Steinmeier confirmed strong support for Georgia's European course on the part of Germany and his country's readiness to build up political economic cooperation between the two countries. The parties discussed German Chancellor Angela Merkel's planned visit to Georgia, which is scheduled to take place in the spring of 2015. We came up with an initiative to raise an issue in the upcoming agreement about direct integration of South Ossetia into the Russian Federation. This statement belongs to Leonid Tibilov, the so-called president of the occupied Tsinmali region. In his words, the work on the agreement between Russia and the so-called South Ossetia is going at full swing. According to Tibilov, at present, they have elaborated a number of proposals in connection with the future agreement and apposite consultations with Russian colleagues have been conducted. Official Belisi responded to Tibilov's declarations accordingly. Georgian authorities pointed out that the agreement of Russia and Tsinvali region, which is occupied by the Russian Federation, has no legal significance. Speaker of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs made the statement that preparation of Georgian Prime Minister's visit to Ukraine is going on a full scale. David Kerasalidze's information was a response to the journalist's question whether the recent changes in the Georgian government would alter the plans of the Premier's visit. Kerasalidze said that the preparations will be accelerated in order to speed up the date of Prime Minister's visit to Ukraine. In the third quarter of 2014, volume of direct foreign investment in Georgia amounted to 508 million United States dollars, which exceeds the data of the third quarter of 2013 by 99%. Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili voiced this information at the meeting with the representatives of International <laughs> Finance Corporation. Georgian Premier acquainted the guests with the reforms implemented in Georgia. According to the representatives of International Finance Corporation, growth of foreign investment is laudable since it signifies increase of the country's trustworthiness. At the meeting, they touched upon the fluctuation of lorry rate. According to Hans Timmer, chief economist of the World Bank in Europe and Central Asia, Georgian currency does not face the danger of instability. Lately, European prices started to go down, while the United States dollar began to get more expensive. This process affected the Georgian lorry which does not mean that Larry has any problems. On the contrary, Larry is quite flexible. The fluctuation highlighted its strength 
because the currency components withstood these jolts, Hans Timmer said at the end of the meeting. At the governmental session, Nodar Khaduri, Minister of Finance of Georgia, declared that this year's budget would be fulfilled by 100%, and his ministry expected even bigger replenishment. At the session, the Prime Minister inquired about the situation with the budget of 2014 and requested the Minister of Finance to submit the appropriate account. In connection with budgetary disbursements, Khaduri declared that compared to the last year, the situation in that sphere looked better. The Premier wanted to know the situation with the rate of George and Larry. The Minister of Finance assured him that the rate of Larry had stabilized and the entire public clamor and the expert altercations on the subject had faded away. Garibashvili announced that the opponents have no grounds for supposing that there is an economic crisis or problems with the Lowry rate in the country. At these difficult times, we managed to sustain one of the successful financial policies in the region. I want to tell our population that the countries of this region, like Ukraine, Turkey and Russia face grave economic and political problems. Naturally, these factors affect our economy and the rate of our currency, the Prime Minister declared. Nodar Khaduri, Georgian Minister of Finance, told the journalist that most likely a rate of Larry against the United States dollar would get stronger. In his words, last weekend showed that the rate of Lari became stable. According to him, the rate of Lari has been affected by external factors, overall increase of the rate of dollar, as well as internal factors, the dollar buying fever. Khaduri added that despite the fall of the Lari rate, prices for certain products have decreased. According to David Shavaliashvili, Minister of Regional Development and Infrastructure, his ministry has spent 755 million out of 936 million of state budget. Shavaliashvili articulated this information at the government session. In 2014, the budget of our ministry was 936 million lari. According to the data of last November, we have disbursed 755 million lari. Actually, our ministry has never spent more than 93%. After introducing amendments, they used to reach 97% or even 100%, but we do not do it. As for December, every year they used to spend the greatest part of the budget. In our case, we evenly disburse the budget every month. The minister intends to spend 150 million, which will add up to 95% of the budget. David Shavliashvili, Minister of Regional Development and Infrastructure, and Georgi Amashukeli, Chairman of Municipal Progress Fund in the sphere of urban development met with the representatives of Asian Development Bank. At the meeting, they touched upon the progress of infrastructural projects that are implemented by the financial support of the Ministry of Regional Development and Infrastructure. To discuss the progress of the sustainable transport investment program. Uh, so, from this program, we have the Tbilisi West Tavi Road that is financed, some coastal improvement project in Anaklia. So, we've been discussing the progress of ongoing uh, project, but uh, also the, the new one that, we, that will start. During a fortnight, the mission of the Asian Bank has been examining the current projects and monitored the work of the municipal fund. According to Georgi Amashukeli, representatives of Asian Development Bank positively evaluated the work done by the Municipal Progress Fund. Part of construction and developer companies express protest against the terms of state tenders. 
Representatives of the companies argue that unlike European and neighboring countries, Georgian state does not offer privileges to low-budget companies. Due to that fact, most of the companies will be induced to leave the market. According to the long-term forecast, this problem will cause job destruction and regress in the developer sphere. Foreign companies arrive in Georgia. They hire Georgian companies and make them work for nothing. Meanwhile, instead of enriching our country's treasury, the profit goes to other countries, for instance to China or Turkey. Developer companies talk about the need to introduce amendments to the law on purchases. In the words of builders, some companies in the tenders for the price cheaper by 30 to 40 percent than the tender cost. This affects the quality of the performed work. As a result, the state is compelled to spend additional money on the repair of the property that was handed in. They win the tender and then they construct the buildings that are nothing much to look at. How can you build something out of nothing? We specialists of this business have no doubt that it is done only at the expense of quality. Economic experts confirm that the law on purchases needs amendments. Temur Khomeriki used to work on the first bill on purchases and now in the capacity of an independent expert, he is the initiator of amendments to the current legislation. As of 2006, all modern forms and methods that were incorporated in the law have been eliminated. They use electronic tenders everywhere, which identifies the cheapest executor of the work. But is that feature enough? Does it prove that the money was properly spent? Look at the quality of roads and buildings. They say at the mayor's office that when the company wins the tender, for a radically low price, the quality of work, which was done by that company, is subjected to the double control. Members of the Belize government say that they help low-budget companies by effecting down payment for the planned work. Amendments to the law on procurements have been initiated by the government due to the lack of jobs until the bill is presented to the parliament, some developer companies have to earn money one way or the other. The Georgian air company Airzena has postponed its decision to stop performing flights to Moscow. Management of Airzena com complains that it suffers significant losses due to the fact that Russian and Georgian air companies operate on unequal terms. Managers of Airzena protest against the breach of parity principle and demand to have the opportunity of operating on equal terms with Russian air companies. In case their demand is not fulfilled, eventually, they threaten to go on with protest actions. Some tourist companies and students of Aeronautical Institute have joined the protest of the Arizona company. The Ukrainian Privat Bank has left the Georgian market. Bank of Georgia paid $51 million for the affiliated branches of the Ukrainian bank. Together with 100% of shares, the Bank of Georgia holding will get 418,000 customers of the second largest bank in Georgia. Assets of the Bank of Georgia will be enriched with 93 affiliated branches, 429 ATMs, and more than 1,900 terminals. In terms of the credit shares of individuals, the market share of the bank will increase by 5.3%, and in terms of deposits, it will grow by 2.6%. Till now, only the bank's official statement has acquainted the public with its future plans. The statement reads, purchase of private bank will enable the Bank of Georgia to enhance its leading position in the sphere of retail banking activity. 
it will boost the bank's market share and expand the customer resources. We believe that the process of merging with private bank will be smooth while the consumers of both banks will get access to service centers, ATMs, and one of the widest and the most developing network of payment systems in Georgia. At the same time, the chairman of the board of directors of Privat Bank believes that the merger of two banks offers a unique chance of dynamic growth and expansion of cooperation. At this stage, employees of the bank cannot say how the process of rebranding will take place. In the first 10 months of 2014, profit of Privat Bank amounted to five and a half million lari. But compared to the last year's analogous period, the profit in total is 26 million less. Experts of the banking sector explain that by means of buying the shares of Privat Bank, the Bank of Georgia holding will strengthen its position on the financial market. At the same time, the holding bought almost 50% of shares of Georgian Water and Power Company. The bank paid $52 million for Tbilisi Water. Along with structural changes, the bank plans innovations in human resources as well. By the end of 2015, the holding intends to separate the banking financial activity from non-banking business. Report of Georgian Trade Unions Association devoted to the protection of labor rights covered such issues as overtime working hours, short-term and oral contracts, safety norms, etc. At the association, they believe that one way or another, the rights of employees are violated in the private sector as well as at state enterprises and offices. They plan to set up a state inspection that will monitor the implementation of the labor code. The bill is ready and waiting to be discussed at, uh, and approved. However, nobody can say when it will be submitted for discussions. Sanctions against littering will become tougher. The fine for pedestrians will be 80 lari for throwing rubbish out of the window. The tenant will pay 10 lari. If the volume of rubbish exceeds two kilograms, the amount of fine will increase accordingly. The citizens who leave the waste of their paths in the street will be fined by 50 lari. The amendments will be entered in the Waste Management Code. The amendments were initiated by the Ministry of Environmental Protection. The event took place on the military formation assuming ground of the 4th Vaziani Light Armored Brigade. They saw off the Georgian Armed Forces Company assigned to the peacekeeping mission in the Central African Republic. At the Ministry of Defense, they view the staff that left for the CAR as a unit composed of experienced servicemen. Most of them have served in the peacekeeping mission in Afghanistan. This mission draws Georgia closer to the European Union, nearer to European countries. Together with their militaries, our soldiers and officers are defending peace and stability in the region of Central Africa. This is another confirmation of our contribution to the system of global security. Georgia is one of these countries who understand their uh, global international responsibilities. Some countries don't understand that. Georgia understands that all these security challenges, they are interconnected. So that's why your country sends troops in many places. The staff of the 23rd Infantry Battalion of the Second Select Military Company and the invited guests observed a minute of silence in memory of Georgian servicemen who fell in the battle for our country's territorial integrity or fulfilling their duties in international missions. 
Well, that's all this morning. You are watching the weekly Business News in English on uh, Channel 3 of the Georgian Television. Thank you very much for being with us. I am Nugzar Ruhadze. Let me also tell you that this is our final news show in English at this time. We might see you again sometime next year, only depending on circumstances and the necessity of our renewed presence on the air. Let me now wish you, our faithful and wonderful viewers, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Cheers and goodbye now.